All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next presenter, uh, a, every single time he presents, he freaks me out. This guy packs in more facts in 15 minutes than anybody could possibly do. This guy will drop so many knowledge bombs. You're going to want to take notes. You're going to want to get your phone out. You're going to want to film it. This presentation is mind-blowing. Our next presenter is a serious documentar a documentary filmmaker, an independent investigative journalist, and an activist behind films such as Loose Change, Fabled Enemies, Invisible Empire, and shade. Find all of his projects today at rockfin.com forward slash Jason Burmis. That's rockfin.com forward slash Jason Burmis. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet and greet Jason Burmis. All right, thank you, folks. Normally I wear a uh, suit jacket, but I thought the transhumanist NASA bear was very appropriate because NASA is not really a space agency. We'll probably get there. But the main focus of my talk is actually what transgenderism, which Simone Gold was just talking about, is really about, and it's about transhumanism. So what you're looking at right here are two books, Virtually Human and Unzipped Genes, and they are by a person named Martin Rothblatt, formerly Martin Rothblatt. Martin Rothblatt is the second richest transgender person in the world, and I would argue the most powerful hands down. Now, what you're looking at in the middle is actually the symbology for the religion that Martin Rothblatt created based on transhumanism called Terrasim. Now, if you have any doubt that transgenderism is about transhumanism, she wrote the book on it, or he. From transgender to transhuman, in the forward, they talk about billions of sexes, but we're going to let Martine tell you about that as well. They go as far as to say marking down male or female on a birth certificate is the same as apartheid South Africa of putting down white or black. That's how insane these people are. Let's meet. Martine, as they talk about their book. Um, the point of view that um, I have in, in my book, From Transgender to Transhuman, is that there are actually billions of possible sexual and gender identities. Um, sex emerges out of a delicate dance of pro-male, anti-male, and pro-female genes. Uh, genes, as much as hormones, shape our brain gender or neurogender. There are multiple different genes that affect um, our brain tissue even before any genitals form. So it's just really not true that even biology creates just two different um, kinds of sexes or two different kinds of genders. It's uh, much more something that we're socialized with. So this is the big lie. There is no nature. There is only nurture. And you notice we went billions. Think about that for a second, folks. Not one, two, three, six, eleven, a thousand, billions. And that's because they want you to reject your biology and embrace a digital or transhuman reality. Now, this is them talking about, and I encourage you to watch the full one-hour lecture. It takes you right through it. But here's the basis. I'd like to talk about the technologically uh being transgendered, about uh, technically being transhuman. Similar challenges uh, faced by people identifying as transgendered or transhuman. So this is their science to take technologies like DNA and beyond and alter us, make us transhuman. Hang on to your humanity, folks. I'm encouraging it. So here, Rothblatt is uh, with the wife that he, she stayed with. And there is the robotic replica of that wife, Bina 48, that Martine Rothblatt hoped would be the first to pass the Turing test. Now, on certain levels, the Turing test has now been passed. And for those that are unaware of what that is, that is when an artificial intelligence can trick a human in, into not knowing whether it is a robot or whether it is a human. We have crossed that Rubicon, folks. They are also the head of United Therapeutics. When I say this person is the most powerful, hands down, 
GPS, Martin Rothblatt. Sirius XM, satellite technology, Martin Rothblatt. Growing human organs in pigs and other animals approved by the FDA, Martin Rothblatt. Now some of these have already taken place. First person to get the pig transplant died a couple weeks later. This woman was the second person to get that pig kidney transplant. Didn't last, had to take it out. She's on dialysis again. Remember, these people always overpromise and come at it with a benevolent perspective. Here, Rothblatt is essentially going to tell you about this future. And uh, this gentleman talks about her Billie Jean King Award. You want to know where all the money's coming from? You want to know why all these bills are passing? Rothblatt is a huge part of it. Is also the recipient of this year's Billie Jean King Leadership Initiative Award, which is devoted to LBGT issues and puts her in an interesting issue because she has a company or part of the company is based in North Carolina, which, as you know, right now, she might get arrested for going to the bathroom uh, if the governor had anything to do about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Martine Rothblatt. Martin, one of the basic concepts that you're interested in, it's not just improving life, but it's actually immortality. That we're all going to live forever. And Martin, I uh, might mention, has founded a religion, as one does, uh, known <laughs> as, uh, as terrorism. It's uh, based on transhumanism. And you have the idea that we're not just going to live a long time, but we're all going to live forever. Tell us your concept of immortality and how that actually would work. Thanks, Neely. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, the idea is, is one that has been percolating up from lots of people in the information technology industry for a while. Um, perhaps uh, Ray Kurzweil, who um, is a um, prolific inventor, is, is best known for the idea that as our abilities in the information processing industry, uh, computer software, storage of more and more of our thoughts and our, de our ideas outside of our body becomes easier, uh, more automatic, uh, less expensive, that um, ult ultimately we're going to have sort of digital doppelgangers of ourselves that are stored um, in the cloud and are able to present themselves to any manner of devices. And that as um, thousands and thousands of uh, software coders and hackers and people in the maker movement work to make the software that runs these digital doppelgangers ever more lifelike, ever more human-like, there'll come sort of a tipping point when people will begin to claim that these digital doppelgangers have achieved what we call consciousness, um, an ability to have a sense of themselves, hopes, fears, and feelings. And at that point, I think the um, activity will move to the legal arena as to whether or not these digital doppelgangers really are conscious, really do have an independent legal identity. And kind of the trend of progressive uh, thinking is once there's a scientific consensus, um, and in this case it would be the science of psychology, that being the science of the mind, that these uh, digital uh, doppelgangers are, are in fact cyber conscious, um, then they'll begin to acquire the sorts of rights and protections that uh, we assign to um, even uh, our pets, um, laboratory animals, and to quite a high extent to um, primates like chimpanzees. And so in this way, our cells will kind of morph into a sort of digital consciousness that is recognized by the law as being alive. Folks, it's going to go well beyond your pets. And you notice you're going to trust the science and the science of psychology. Now, even the moderator understood this is the next level of eugenics. And I think very quickly we'll get to a point where we say that that cyber conscious individual has a soul. It's Neely's soul. And even if, God forbid, Neely's body ends in a car accident or some other death and disability, Neely did not end. Neely's identity continues in this cyber-conscious form. Let me ask you one more about sort of the frightening aspects of this, because there would be some people that none of us want to live forever. Um, Hitler, for example. 
uh, nobody wants this guy to be able to uh, upload, right? So where do you get into sort of uh, eugenics was a real thing in this country. In other words, you know, 20 years, 80 years ago, we're going to cull people to make the, the whole tribe better. Eugenics is still a real thing, and they're still pushing it. Now, what you're looking at here is somebody who's already considered trans species, has literally put a orb on his head that communicates in different ways. And Harbison is very, very open about the fact that the transgender movement is moving towards transhumanism. Have, but that humans don't have. So we are in a stage in history that actually design what species we consider myself a trans species, having senses and organs that other species have. So this is all being pushed by the United Nations. Big surprise. LGBTIQA, LMNOPO. It will go on forever. And they'll tell you about this gender and health and how they're going to take charge. They're also heavily involved in the metaverse, which is going to help you take on these digital identities where you can be whatever you want and further take you away from reality. Rothblatt mentioned somebody, Ray Kurzweil, Age of Spiritual Machines, part of Google, in fact, part of their immortality division that you don't know about, called Calico Labs. Please look into it. And then the singularity. Oh, sorry, didn't want to do that. Um, here, Kurzweil is talking about mind files all the way back in 99. So we're not going to throw our mind file away just because the hardware crashes or as we go to the next person computer to embody our bodies and our brains, uh, we'll copy them and we'll retain that, that information. Uh, there's a little fly in the ointment from my perspective, which is just because there's this entity that thinks it's Ray Kurzweil because he has, a, he has that memory, uh, that snapshot of all the memories and knowledge that, that I've accumulated over the last several decades that have been on this planet. Uh, I'm still, the old Ray Kurzweil, which is me, is still here in my carbon cell-based brain. And so my consciousness hasn't really been transferred over to this new entity. Uh, in fact, you could have scanned my brain while I was sleeping and go and create this copy. I wouldn't even necessarily know about it. So I'll just probably end up jealous of this guy because he'll share my ambitions and dreams, but he'll be in a much better position than I am to fulfill them. So right there is being very honest, right? You're never going to transfer your consciousness. And you notice that he talks about these entities being so persuasive that we give them the rights. Don't fall for it, folks. So once again, when you talk about transgender to transhuman, here's Kurzweil back in 2006 talking about his female virtual identity and showing you it. Who is Ramona? Well, this is a, a project that started a number of years ago. Uh, she's a female, uh, she's my female alter ego and will have virtual bodies in these virtual reality environments particularly when it's through the nervous system. When we have uh, nanobots in our brains that can shut down the signals coming from our real senses, replace them with the signals that your brain would be receiving if you were in the virtual environment, then it'll feel like you're in that virtual environment. Your body doesn't have to be the same body that you have in real reality. A couple could become each other, for example. And, all, and so I wanted to demonstrate how you could do that. Well, in virtual reality, you can be who you want to be, and you can be where you want to be and with whom you want to be. In virtual reality, you can be someone else. You don't have to be the same boring person all the time. I mean, you all have these personalities inside you that don't quite fit with your bodies in real reality. So basically, most people just, like, kill them all off. Some people don't actually keep any of their personalities, which reminds me of some of my old boyfriends, but that's another story. Mr. Ray Kurzweil, Kurzweil can't wait so to tell you serious project. about his virtual boyfriends. And not just about a human brain interface like a Neuralink, right? But the nanobots that are going to be in all of our bodies and all of our brains, whether we like it or not. The gentleman you're looking at right here is the former chief scientist of NASA. He was around all the way before the Apollo days in Gemini, hence the shirt. He's going to tell you that in 2018, they had already put brain chips, I believe, in a couple hundred thousand people. He praises Musk, and he also tells you that 
all regular evolution is over. They have taken over. That is what directed evolution is. Humans are now becoming cyborgs. We have cochlear implants to hear, artificial retinas to see, artificial hearts to live, artificial limbs to move, artificial organs to functions, and brain chips. There's a couple hundred thousand people wandering around with brain chips now to fix congenitally defective brains and increasingly to fix memory and other things. DARPA's working on brain chips for super soldiers. And people are now working thanks to uh, Musk and other people funding uh, direct machine brain communications. The, the, he, it's not us versus them, us versus the machines. We're merging. And this is the human evolution of the humans. There is no more natural evolution of anything. People are convinced that the human evolution of everything is 10 million times faster than any natural evolution. And so this is just part of the human evolution. So the mad scientists are pretty open about what they're doing and out there. I'm just going to leave you with this. Normally, my presentation is pretty musk heavy. We're going to be light. I want to let everybody know this is the number one defense contractor in the world. This is the face of transhumanism. This is the guy building Optimus robots. And oh, by the way, here he is all masked up showing you the factories he helped build with Tesla and CureVac at the EU that printed the hate and lie shots. This man is responsible for the vast majority of those that put these in their arms. And he made a pretty penny. He increased his net worth 600% during the pandemic, more than Bill Gates, more than Warren Buffett, more than Sergey Brin, more than all the, all the other tyrants you've heard about. And that robot, that's built like a human for you to acquiesce. It has no other actual purpose. Folks, that is my time. I hope you check out all of my documentary films. They are free, and I would just say this, spread the love and stay human. Wow, Jason Burmis, your phone's right here. You're sick. Let's hear it for that guy. Jason Burmis, wow. How many of you found that was slightly disturbing? Okay, okay.